One of the things I love about motorcycling is that it's a great leveler. It doesn't matter who you are off the bike. As soon as you get on the bike and put your helmet on, you are a motorcyclist, just like the next person. And just like the next person, whether you like it or not, every now and then you have to clean your motorcycle. And for me, this is where there is a big difference in the approach from different riders. At one end of the spectrum, you've got people who are the knowledge bearers that seem to be born knowing how best to restore, clean and maintain their bike. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you've got people like me, who after 15 years of riding, haven't given more than two minutes thought to how best to approach this task. I'm still using fairy liquid, soap and water. And assuming that anything that was left after that process is basically the reserve for professionals and people that have too much time on their hands. But fortunately, everyone at Urban Rider knows more than I do about this process. And we've decided to launch the full range of muck off gear, cleaning products and accessories. And so I've been sent down here today to the muck off HQ to basically get a crash course from the masters of filth in how best to approach this task. And it's been clear to me that I could easily have replaced all that elbow grease and hard work with the right product and the right know-how. So if you were like me, hopefully this video will be useful and we're gonna go through the three, three stages of clean, protect and lube and we're gonna tell you how best to do it. The bike that we have with us today is a Triumph Thruxton TFC. This is a factory custom bike, it's absolutely beautiful. And one of the things you're gonna notice about it is it's not that dirty. And this is a big point because your bike doesn't need to be literally camouflaged and caked in dirt in order for you to need to clean it. Often in these drier months, it's the invisible dirt, it's the grease, it's the things that get in the drivetrain that do the most damage. And ultimately, if we keep on top of the maintenance, it's gonna be cleaning the bike better, keeping it clean for longer, and it's gonna mean less money and outlay on the consumables in the long run. So without further ado, let's dive into the first of these three steps, the cleaning phase. So when it comes to the cleaning phase, there is the constant and there is the variable. The constant is the chain cleaner, which essentially you use however dirty or whatever method you're using for cleaning the rest of the bike. So we'll get to this in a second. You're probably all familiar with the Muck Off Nano Tech Wash. This is the pink liquid which we see everywhere from the mountain bike pursuits to the motorcycling world and this works brilliantly and this is great for when the bike is absolutely caked visibly in dirt but the important thing is it doesn't need to be visibly caked in dirt to still need a clean and this is what we have here this wonderful bike has been used for several hundred miles but because of the dry weather it doesn't look that bad but get up close and you can see the dust you can see the grime that's caked on it so we're going to use the waterless wash and this is something I did not even know existed before I came here this morning but this is perfect for those urban riders who maybe own motorcycles living in the city where they have to park it on the street or in an underground car park and maybe access to water from a hose pipe isn't a given. So this is something that makes this process really easy. So we're gonna start off with how we apply this chain cleaner. So as we can see around this wheel, we've got quite a light coating of the dust. And as you can see on the chain as well, we have lumps of grime that are collecting. This doesn't look too bad, but you don't want it to get any worse. Otherwise you do start really wearing into the lifeline of the chain. So we're gonna take the chain cleaner and we're going to have the wheel off the ground. We're basically gonna apply it so that it sprays across it for the first time. Make sure we get a full rotation in there. And the great thing about this is that you don't need to be too careful with it. You can't go hugely wrong with the cleaning part of the process because this is biodegradable in the wash and in the spray. So it's not gonna do any damage wherever it gets on the bike. But try and keep this vaguely around the chain and we're gonna use the brush here, this chain brush, to agitate it. So we're gonna keep this going around. Just try and work that in there. And you can see it's already starting to drip off. You'll see in a moment, we're gonna just spray it back on and it's pretty much just gonna repel all that dirt straight out. So again, this is a good example of what I was saying earlier, just about being low hassle and not requiring elbow grease, just letting the right product do the work for you. So after we've given it the first spray, which basically gets in and drives that dirt out, we've given it a little bit of an agitation with the brush, we're gonna give it one more spray. And again, you don't have to worry too much. This is water soluble. If it goes on the tire, it's all gonna come off later, so it's really, really easy. But just watch how quickly all of the remaining grime just gets driven out as we spray this onto the chain. And then finally, we're just gonna grab a microfiber towel and we're just gonna wipe off any excess. You don't have to do this, but it just helps again, sort of avoid any drips after we've moved on to the next phase. Get all that, and there we are. The chain is looking sparkling new, and that was super easy. Now we're gonna move on to the disc brake cleaner. Okay, so next up we're gonna have a look at the disc brakes and this is obviously something that's very important to all of us, the ability to stop well and keeping these in good working order is an absolute priority. This little cleaner here is specifically for disc brakes and brake components and it's very, very easy to use. All we're gonna do is spray it across the area, try and get in all these areas. It's fine to go on the pads as well 
and we have a little brush here just to agitate it. If it's really heavily soiled, that's always a good thing to do, but we don't necessarily need it. But what we're doing is just lifting away the grease, the oil, if there is any brake fluid that's made its way onto the disc, we need to get rid of this as well. So we're just gonna give that a little rub round and then essentially we're just gonna wipe any excess away with the towel again and that's gonna make it come up really nicely. It's gonna be a good degree of shine restored back in it. And it's just going to not only get rid of the grease, but it's gonna actually hydrate the disc as well, just to keep it working as well as it possibly can for as long as possible. So the great thing about the waterless wash, as with the Nanotech cleaner as well, is that it's completely idiot proof. You literally just spray it anywhere and everywhere that you want to clean and you don't need to worry too much. Unlike some of the steps later on, you maybe need to pay a bit more attention to what you do and don't use on different parts. Spray it on, it works immediately, you don't need to leave it five minutes whilst you go and do something. Wipe it away and you can see those results straight away for their seeds. You just wipe it away with the microfiber towel. We're just gonna go over the areas that have got this light soiling, so on the inside of the rims, on the exhaust itself, and continue until your heart's content. But it's as simple as spray, wipe, and you're done. So either of the two main cleaning products are perfectly capable of coating the entire bike and doing the job really, really well. But as a little kind of bonus point, if you've got the helmet, visor, and goggle cleaner, it works really well on these clear and mirrored surfaces just to bring out the best luster. It's pH neutral, it's tailored specifically for optics, so it's gonna work slightly better on these. And it's exactly the same, we're just gonna spray it on and just give it a nice light microfiber wipe down and it's really gonna bring out the gleam in those surfaces. So now that we've finished the cleaning phase of the process, we've got rid of all the dirt, it's onto the protect phase. And there's a number of different products and different ways we can approach this. And one thing to say is even though it seems like there's a lot of options, a lot of accessories, if you bought absolutely everything in the mock-off range, you're looking at somewhere between 100 and 150 pounds, which given how much most of us spend on bikes like these and the gear that we have, doesn't seem too bad an investment when you consider what a good job it can do in protecting your asset. So the two main polish versions we have here, we've got the speed polish, which is a really simple spray. We're gonna put that on the tail and that can just be wiped away for an instant easy result. And we also have the Miracle Shine, which is more of a wax. It requires a little bit more elbow grease, but it's gonna get you better results if you put the effort in. We'll talk a little bit about how different ones might be better used in different areas. Obviously with these as well, it goes without saying you wanna keep these away from things like the brake discs and the tires, unlike the cleaning product. We also have the motorcycle protectant, which is great at just repelling water and getting in as a sort of armor layer on those components, especially the hard to reach ones, and just keeping the layers that we put on on top with the polish working better for longer. So the speed polish is good for paint, chrome, plastic areas. Very, very straightforward what we can do. It's just give it a light spray and straight away get to work and it just brings out a really nice and easy shine. And there we go. The Miracle Shine is more of a proper polish in the sense that it's gonna fill in nicely any little minor blemishes on the surface, but it's still really straightforward. So we're just gonna give it a good shake and then we're gonna take out just a sort of small amount onto the cloth and just gonna lightly kind of dab it across. You want it to dry to get a light haze across the area that you're gonna be working on. Just give it a few seconds. You don't need to wait particularly long. Just make sure it's dried in nicely. Take a clean part of the microfiber towel and in circular motions, just exerting a very small amount of pressure, you're just gonna work your way across it. And when it comes away, you are gonna have a really, really nice shine that's definitely worth just that little bit of effort that you have to put into achieving it. So then bridging the divide between Protect and Lube, we have the MO94 Protect and Lube. And essentially this is a spray that is gonna be good for things like metal parts you want lubrication and protection on. So very simple again, we're just gonna apply this sort of lightly, just getting into those hard to reach areas. And now onto the final and arguably the most important part of the process, this is lubricating your chain. And Markov have three different chain lubes to choose between. We have the wet for when it's wet, the dry for when it's dry, and the all weather for if you just can't make your mind up or you live in England. So we're gonna go onto the dry lube because this is a scorching hot day and we're just gonna show you how best to apply this. So with the spray itself, you get the choice of two different nozzles and it's always better to use the extender basically because you wanna get this as accurate as possible. What you wanna do is really get in on this underside of the rings itself and apply a very light amount of the lube. You don't wanna go overkill and you wanna really, above all, try to avoid getting it on the tire. So if you have enough arms spare, if you've got something to wedge behind it, but if you're confident that you can apply it directly, then just make sure you just give it a light coating, get in there, spin that wheel around if you've got a paddock stand, give it one revolution, nothing more, and job done. 
So the whole bike is now gleaming clean and I'm looking forward to getting my fee for valeting it for someone. Uh, but basically, um, what I've learned is that you don't need to put hours into this. It's very simple. There's so many products to choose from in the range. Even if you just start with the essentials kit and work your way up, I think you'll find that every little bit of the cleaning range that you invest in is going to reap rewards for you. So head over to Urban Rider for the full range of muck-off gear. Any questions and comments, leave that in the section below and we'll get back to you and stay tuned for more video reviews of the world's finest riding gear. Thank you for watching. See you again soon. Goodbye.